Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I just wanted to go over quickly how you can do some texture projecting onto really basic geometry, and how you can really quickly create a whole bunch of parts from a car, and eventually we're going to be using these parts to create kind of an engine bay thing, and we're going to do a whole fly through, and we're going to zoom into the keyhole, or into here or something. You can see this is all projected on some nice geometry, and it turns out to be a pretty quick workflow because we're relying on the realism of the texture, and we're going to be fairly sloppy and basic with our geometry. But it works! So over here you can see I've got a pretty useful image of the inside of a car with its engine stripped out, and we're just going to be kind of using this as a texture for all this random geometry that we're going to create. So we've got a camera up here. I'm going to go control and zero on the number pad just to make sure that's the active camera. And it's the same resolution as this image. That's a pretty important detail. Let's go into the camera properties here. Check background images and let's add this image in. Uh, 576 is the last few digits. Here it is. Okay, so we're projecting this into the background now. Let's just go in here and grab some things that could be kind of cool. I really like this kind of rubber boot looking thing. So I'm going to drop my 3D cursor here with shift and right click and let's go shift A and just add in a circle. So I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees on the Y axis. So R, Y and 90. And let's scale this up to be roughly the correct size here. And we can just go into edit mode with tab here. You can hit one on the keyboard to go into vertex select. Let's just hit A to select everything maybe rotate it a little bit just to match up a little bit better. And then let's just go crazy here. I'm gonna hit E and that'll extrude it sideways. And we can kind of scale it down a little bit. E again, scale it up a little bit, just kind of matching it up with this texture here. So to select this whole loop, I'm hitting Alt and Shift. And that usually works pretty well. Okay, I'm just finishing it off here without any special scaling. A lot of this stuff can be pretty sloppy and you can do it pretty quickly. And the advantage of projecting an image on afterwards is a lot of the lighting and shading will end up looking quite good, even though you didn't necessarily spend a whole lot of time on it. Okay, so we've got this basic object all modeled out. Now what we want to do is in edit mode with everything selected, let's hit U and project from view. And you can see the UV coordinates slam right on there into the image texture. If we go into the material tab here and hit new material, we can go, let's switch this to an emission. So I'm going to hit E, there we go, emission. Let's change the color to be an image texture and the image to be that texture that we just used. And now, if we look at this object in rendered view, you can see we've got this nice boot kind of thing going on here. Okay, so if we want to make this a little bit smoother, what we can do is once again hit Alt and Shift and left mouse button to select these. Right now I'm in X-ray view, so I'm going to hit Z and go toggle X-ray so we can see things a little bit clearer. And we can just go all the way down the line. Let's actually be in edge select so we don't select the in-between edges. We're just going to grab all these, and once we've selected all that, we can go Control B and bevel it out a little bit. Oh, we missed an edge here. And once you go Control B, you can actually scroll up, and that will smooth out the bevel a little bit more. And now we've got this nice kind of rubbery looking boot object, and we can throw this into our engine wherever we want. Don't tell any mechanics what we're doing here, because we're artists and we don't really know what's going on inside of engines. I guess we have an idea, but it's all going to be artistic license, I think. So we can go through and do that again to another part of this image if we want. This could be a really cool object we could grab here. Okay, not too bad. I wouldn't say it's perfectly realistic, but it's definitely kind of got some chunkiness to it that's pretty nice. If we want to keep working on it and make it even more realistic, we could add in this wire here. One thing that's good to keep in mind is the depth of the object in the picture. You can't always see that from the camera view. Another nice thing to do when you've got a cylinder like this is if we hold down control and then right click, that's a good way to kind of extrude the selection really quickly.
let's project some stuff on here. View, project from view. That's got the same material already. So if we hit period on the number pad and zoom into this object, you can see it's got a little bit more depth and that'll add a little bit more realism. Now also, if we want to take this and make it a little bit more accurate, let's just select it all and scale it down a little bit so it fits on this little pulley thing. There we go. So these techniques are a really good way to just kind of throw together some really cool looking objects that are kind of sloppy, but once you throw them all together, they can actually become fairly realistic, especially when you're flying through an engine really quickly. If you found this useful and you're interested in seeing more tutorials like it, definitely hit that subscribe button so you can catch up with the future installments of this project. And if you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, I have created a completely free video for you. And in that video, I'll share five different tricks for you for integrating your CG creations into actual footage. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely go ahead and check out the link in the description. But hey, I'd say we're done here. I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.